Hi and welcome to the Cortex website setup tutorial. We're just going to show you today the basic uh, settings that you'll need to set up within the Cortex system before you kind of begin working on things. The very first thing you're going to do is come up here to your actual website and click slash admin and this will bring you to the admin screen. The next thing you're going to do is log in using your username and password and you'll show up here on the Cortex dashboard. The best thing to do when you first start out is to click this little content and design button right here and that will bring you to the content and design delivery area. And I click on this themes button here at the bottom and choose your theme. This is typically the recommended theme to choose for Cortex since it's kind of our demo and setup theme with all the full features already built into it. So it's going to take a few seconds here to actually fire off so just kind of be patient and it'll what it'll do is actually kind of kick you out of the system and you'll have to re-log back in and what that does is that's basically just refreshing the entire Cortex system since you uh, switched themes but then you can kind of come out here and you can look at your actual website by just going to the main URL and you can see here that your theme is all set up and good to go head back to your administration area and click the settings button right here. Now this is the area where you can start to set up all of the things for your Cortex website. And as you can see here, you want to want to put in the full URL of your website. The main URL of your website is kind of more like a vanity URL, so you can really put whatever you want in there. It's not really important, but for this full URL, that's actually really important and a lot of settings are built off of the um, that URL. Is this store live? You want to leave this unchecked until you actually go live. That will start telling um, Cortex to start gathering data and it will quickly fill up your database with bad data if you go live beforehand. Um, fill out the company name along with a primary email. And this is exactly um, where all the emails from your store um, will come from when you're sending out email newsletters and various other things like that. You can set up a text phone number, store title, meta keywords and description. This store title is the default title tag in your HTML for SEO when you're first hitting the home page. This is how many blog posts per page, products per page. And this address is really important when it comes to inventory. If you're deciding not to track inventory, all items will be shipped from this address. So it's really important to make sure that um, you have this address set up. Now if you have actual inventory, the best thing to do is to set up a warehouse. Um, and in fact, you're gonna have to set up a warehouse before you start. And we'll show you that in just a second here. Again, fill out your phone, a secondary email, allow retail stores. You can check that if you're gonna have retail stores along with inventory that you want customers to search through on your website leave this required SSL on checkout until you actually go live and then this hide mobile view button will allow you to not display the separate mobile website but to actually build a responsive design if that's what you'd like to choose. So as soon as we've done that and we're going to track inventory so you can see right here it says yes on tracking inventory so let's go ahead head over to the inventory orders and inventory area here and set up our first warehouse. Now what you're going to want to do is click this new warehouse button. But for right now we'll just show you a current existing warehouse and it'll say right here as you can see this is our warehouse name and if you put in an email right here this is where e orders will be emailed to this email address as well along with um, address, city, state, zip code. This is actually where the shipping will be calculated from so it's very important to be um, accurate with that information. Let's head back on over to the settings area as soon as you've added a warehouse. Make sure to click save by the way. And come down here to the points enabled the points enabled field right here. You can either enable points or disable them. And again, for points earned per dollar spent, that will basically say that for every dollar the customer spends, they're going to earn 100 points. And then for this points cost for every dollar in the store means 
that for every um, dollar of value for the product, that's how much it's going to cost. So for instance, let's say you had a $10 product, it's going to cost you 10,000 points to actually get that product for free. And then for instance, let's say you order a $10 item, you're going to get 1,000 points. So essentially this ratio right here is equivalent to about 10% reward um, to spendings ratio. Come on down here to the social media area and we will actually show you two different areas, um, uh, two different videos to show you how to set up the Facebook and your Twitter access information. What that'll do is actually allow your help desk area to go out and grab tickets based from your Facebook and Twitter websites so that you can then respond to those tickets within the help desk area. Again, we'll go over that in some other videos. Jump on down here to the email area and fill out your email address, customer service email server, and customer service email password. What this will do is actually go out and pull down emails out of the, whatever account that you choose in this email address from this particular server and pull them into the help desk area. So, and that's a little tricky to set up. So what you'll have to actually do, depending on who your email service is, you'll have to probably either contact them or Google how to set up or what their email server in, is. And then they'll show you, they'll usually have instructions on whether it's a POP server, an IMAP server, and whether SSL is required. Again, you'll have to contact your third party email service to get that information. We'll jump on down here to the shipping area. Um, when a shipment leaves from multiple warehouses, how would you like to calculate shipping? And the best way to do that is to charge the highest single rate or highest rate from a single warehouse. You can either choose that or you can calculate both warehouses or you know however many warehouses the shipment has to come from. Um, or you can just charge a flat rate shipping fee and by simply clicking yes and then filling out the flat rate cost. You can also add an extra shipping fee by hitting yes and adding a shipping fee cost. Now, this is another cool thing that you can do. You can either set up custom shipping rules or set up a shipping provider that pulls down live rates. The, f the best way to do this is simply hit yes and hit edit shipping rules. And that'll take you to another area where you can set the minimum amount And we'll say for $10, charge $5 shipping. We'll also say for $50, charge $10 shipping. So what that'll do is as soon as someone has hit the $10 threshold, it'll charge them $5 for shipping. As soon as they've hit the $50 threshold, that shipping number will go up to $10. You always want to make sure that you actually have a zero in there so that if it's between zero and $10 here, it'll charge four. If it's between 10 and 50, it'll charge five. And anything above 50 will be charged $10 in shipping. Go ahead and head back to your shipping rules area. And you can activate that by clicking yes. If you leave it no, then it will go and automatically charge either the flat shipping rate that you charged, did up here, or you can set up live shipping through a provider set in here. And again, you'll have to register on one of their websites and the, this information will be fairly obvious once you've registered on their website. And they will give you that information. You set these, simply put that information in here and you should be good to go. And then let's come down here to the live payment data. And you can either, um, right now, we have several payment gateways. Authorize.net is kind of the most popular one. And you can say whether this is a live payment and accepting bad payments will actually allow bad orders, orders that are declined through your payment gateway to still go through. So, that, And they'll be marked as orders that were not paid or they failed on the capture, but at least you can accept them and not have to lose any orders. That's kind of up to you and your store whether you'd like to activate that setting. Let's jump over here real fast to the taxes area and we can click add a tax rule here. Now what this will do 
is we'll say California tax. And this will get very granular. If you leave this alone with a city, it won't, um, it, it'll default to the zip code. So you can come over here to the zip code and you can go down and drill down to a zip code. But if you want to leave that empty, you can just simply charge a certain rate or a flat cost for an entire state. So let's do that. Now, if there's multiple rules that override each other, you can sort them by just simply dragging and dropping, and it will actually use the top, the rule that is on the top before it'll do the one on the bottom. So those top, most important rules you're going to want to place at the top, and those will override the bottom rules. The next thing that we're going to do real fast is set up intelligence categories. Now, intelligence categories are categories that helps Cortex learn about your store. Now, let's say you have male products, female products, luxury products, designer products. Um, those are just examples of intelligence categories. They're not categories in the sense like you have categories on your website and products in them. They're, they're more tailored toward helping Cortex learn about your store. So you can say, for instance, this store has a male and female score, and it also has luxury, designer or casual score. So for instance, let's say you were to have um, a clothing store and you had a female uh, a product that had female that was female jeans and they were cheaper jeans that really weren't luxury. So you would basically have um, on those particular products you'll be able to set scores and you'll probably put the female score at a high number, the casual score at a high number. And that will help Cortex learn about what type of products you have and what customers um, are interested as they browse through your website. Again, intelligence categories are extremely important to set up because it just, it just gives Cortex a really good edge on how people are uh, interacting with your store. And it also helps them, Cortex, learn about who they are much quicker than if you just didn't have intelligence categories. The current limit for intelligence categories is actually 10 items right now. And again, you can really define however many or whatever you want these to be, but these are just suggestions on how to help Cortex learn about who your customers are and uh, what their interests are. And then finally, let's come over to the import data section. We have a couple of default in um, update, or I'm sorry, import data files that you can simply download a sample by clicking here and browsing, um, or I'm sorry, once you download this file, you can modify it to your uh, specifications and your store products. And then once you're ready, you can click browse and upload this file and it will import your products. We don't currently suggest using this way of importing um, unless it's just an inventory import. The best way to actually do this is to contact Cortex at support at cortexcommerce.com and have us actually upload your inventory or your products and your customers. We're very willing and able to help you modify um, or upload your information from other formats or other stores. Um, the reason we suggest that you contact us is the, um, that sometimes these imports take a really long time. Uh, to, to go through and actually import them and they don't necessarily work that well over the web. Sometimes they can time out or have errors. But like I said again, just contact Cortex and uh, we'll be able to help you out. That's pretty much the basics of how to set up a Cortex store. Um, there will be other tutorials and videos on how to add categories, products, set up uh, modify design set up marketing campaigns but again this is just the basic store setup and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to email us support at cortexcommerce.com thank you and uh, that's it